है गाइज वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल ओके सो फ्यू मंथ्स बैक आई गॉट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरव्यू विद एक्सपीडिया ग्रुप फॉर देयर फुल टाइम डेटा साइंस रोल एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर ऑल द एग्जैक्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वर आज टू मी इन दैट पर्टिकुलर इंटरव्यू द क्वेश्चन दैट वर आज वर वेरी डिटेल्ड एंड आई एम गोइंग टू लिस्ट डाउन ऑल द डिटेल्स now some of you might think that i said the interview happened few months back right so how do i remember so much detail well actually every time i give an interview right after the interview i make notes of the questions in as much detail as possible this helps me in the future for other interviews and i suggest you you do the same because it's really really helpful also just to remind you guys i recently shared my amazon data science interview where i shared about 22 questions that were asked to me in that interview the link of which you will find in the description box as well as in the upper right hand side of this video right about now okay so let me give you a brief overview of the interview before jumping on the questions okay so it was a technical online challenge so basically when you apply to expedia within a couple of days you get an email as you see see in right now on the screen uh with a link which you can use to take the test the test was performed on hackerank the length of the test was officially 180 minutes uh but it was recommended in the email to complete it in around or about 90 minutes there were three questions in total um and which were divided into three different sections so basically one question per each section uh there was no sectional time limit so you can spend as much time you want on various sections as well as you can go back and forth so it was not like you have to do the questions in a sequential manner but you can just go back and forth on these different questions on the fi- and finally the three different sections that i am mentioning the first one was a sql exercise the second one was a coding and the final one was a ml exercise okay so let's go in detail one by one about these sections and go over the questions that were asked in very detail uh, i have added the time stamps in the description if you want to go over any particular section only So yeah uh let's start So uh the first section was a SQL exercise I was given three different tables the players table countries table and the goals table along with the name of the columns the data type those columns have and what those columns mean So basically the players table have two column ID and name where id is integer data type name is a string data type and id being the primary key of this table and name means basically the players players name right similarly for countries table as well as the goals table okay and the question read something like this given the database of a football tournament sort the countries by the number of goals scored by that country in that tournament in decreasing order and how did they define the number of goals scored by a country the number of goals scored by a country is basically equal to the sum of all the goals scored by its players if two or more countries have same number of total goals scored in the tournament sort them by country id in ascending order and the final output you should get should have two columns country name and the goals scored So let me give you an example of what basically this question was trying to ask me right so for example here are those three different tables right so this is the players table this is the countries table and this is the goals table where the player id and the name of the player are mentioned the country id and the name of the country is mentioned and then this is the goals table where for player id one so basically for cristiano ronaldo uh cristiano uh, cristiano ronaldo bil- belongs to portugal right so he scored six goals in the tournament similarly player id to messi uh belongs to argentina scored six goals and similarly like that right so now we were asked for different countries what was the total number of goals scored in a dec- sorted in a decreasing manner so 
basically the output should look something like this right so different countries and the goals code um, in decreasing order and had there been any tie in the goals code then we should in, uh, sort the name of the country in ascending order of their ids so for example if we see for france right so it says the expected output was uh, france is at the top with 15 goals to scored right so france is basically country id 4 so country id 4 we have two rows this one and this one seven goals plus eight goals 15 right so that is the maximum one similarly after france it was germany germany is uh, country id 1 so this one 5 plus 3 8 plus 3 11 right so this is what the question was basically trying to ask so you see uh, this question was not very difficult and you shouldn't spend more than five to ten minutes on this uh, and it was pretty doable within five or ten minutes okay uh, let's move to the next section section two was a coding exercise i could have used any language to solve the question but it was mentioned in the HackerRank platform that if I if I uh, you know solve this using Python, it would be a preferred thing to do. Uh, the question read something like this: The number of goals scored by two football teams A and B in different matches in a league is given in the data type list. Right? For each match of team B, write a function called counts to compute the total number of matches of team A where team A has scored less than or equal to the number of goals scored by team B in that match. Uh, don't worry, it sounds confusing, but it is very easy. Uh, I will give you an example what basically this question is trying to ask. Uh, but for the time being, let's read the question, uh, what they wanted to say. The function counts should have following parameters. Uh, team A, an array of positive integers, team B, the second array of positive integers and the output was the function count should return a int m an array of m positive integers one for each team bi match goal representing the total number of elements from team aj satisfying team aj less than equal to team bj and these were the various uh, constraints and things so basically why i have mentioned this question in this way is because i could have you know simply said okay this is what they wanted to ask but i wanted to you guys to know that sometimes what happens so right about when i give an example just after this you will see this question it seems very daunting and very confusing but it is actually very very easy question and it is just only one sp simple small thing that they want us to do but the language of the question seems very you know uh, very confusing so don't worry about it if you encounter such problems in a coding exercise in an interview basically they don't try to test very difficult things the language can be sometimes difficult to you know understand in one or two reads give it a read and go line by line um, and that will make your task easier okay so let me give you an example right what this question is asking so the two arrays named team A and team B are given, right? And looking at these arrays, uh, team A has placed three matches, right? Because we have three different entries in it. Uh, in match one, the team A has scored one goal. In match two, the team has scored two goals. And in match three, the team has scored three goals. Similarly, team B has played two different matches. In the first match, the team B has scored two goals. And in match two the team b has scored four goals now for the first match right for the first match since for two goals scored by team b in the first match team a has two matches where team a scored less than or equal to two goals that is in the first match uh, the team a scored one goal and in second match the team a scored two goals right so these two would be returned right so basically the number two so two is here for second match team b uh, team b scored four goals right so how many matches of team a uh, where team a scored less than four goals 
all these three matches right because in the first second and third match they scored one two and three goals respectively so that is why the output is three so basically this is the very simple thing which they are trying to ask but the language of the question was very you know confusing and daunting especially if you read the question only once so you see this was also not a very complicated question but one should be very careful and i guess uh, about 10 to 15 or let's say 20 minutes would be sufficient for this to easily solve and also make sure that we are not look overlooking any edge cases right okay so moving to the final section right uh, the last section of this assessment it was a typical machine learning exercise and also the most open-ended question of the interview it was basically like a mini real world problem statement. So I was given two different CSV files, train.csv, test.csv. The train.csv file was used, was basically to be used to perform all the steps we generally do in a machine learning exercise, train a model, and then use that model to predict on the test.csv files. Of course, when you predict the target variable, you will get the predicted values in a clicked in the target column, right? So here the target variable was clicked column. Now these predicted values I had to upload in the platform along with the Python notebook or basically wherever I did the analysis. They would or basically the Expedia would then use that those predicted val values to basically see how good the predictions are and then also see like what are the various steps that i have employed so train.csv basically had the following columns test.csv also had the similar columns but they didn't have this clicked column right so basically this is the target variable and rest everything is independent variables right or predictor variables going over the table uh, basically it shows the person level data of different ad campaigns that were run in different countries and whether a person clicked on that ad or not so basically i had to understand these relationships and see how these different you know predictor variables affect this target variable clicked so what do you do so basically, let, let me see, uh, let me go through one of the rows, right? So for example, this was the ad ID on a particular date and time. This was the daily time spent by the person on that particular website in minutes, the age of the person, the area which he or she lives in. So since it is a male, so the area where uh, he lives in has about like uh, the area income of about, you know, $60,000. The person uses about 239 MBs per day and like these are just made up numbers but the columns uh, I remember uh, were these only uh, and then there were different columns uh, like add a topic like the topic of the uh, ad, the country where this ad was you know played, the gender of the person etc and finally based on all that whether the person clicked on the ad or ignored it right. So this was the uh, this was the entire table. So what I did was I started with data pre-processing, cleaning, doing some exploratory data analysis like under understanding different independent variables and their effect on target like like you know uh, gender, age, uh, country, time of the day, etc. Even like uh, I also you know uh, added or you can add or remove few different additional columns for example using this timestamp column right you can add two different columns such as day and you know th that is week of the day and the hour of a day so basically what would happen and this can lead to insights like you know uh, certain type of ads are clicked on a certain time of the day or certain days of the weeks and things like that right so basically performing all these exploratory data analysis uh, then you see there are some numeric features there are some categorical features right so how do you go about dealing with them how do you deal about missing values uh, then you 
can start preparing the pipelines and test out various different classification models, right? So basically this is a classification problem, right? Uh, whether the person clicked or didn't click. Uh, you also see and make sure that there is no class imbalance. So it can be, you know, that most of the people, uh, so about, so this uh, data train.csv, if I remember correctly, had about 1000 rows. So you need to see that it shouldn't be the case that, you know, there are 950 of them didn't click and only 50 of them clicked. Because if that is a case of class imbalance, then you have to up apply various different techniques before you can, you know, jump on the models and things like that. Uh, then since it is a classification model, you employed various metrics like precision, recall, F1 score to test how good these different classification models are. Uh, and then based on all this, you choose one and finally tune its parameters to make it perform even better, right? So once you have the final model, uh, you can go to test.csv and remember uh, to perform all the pre-processing steps, right? In test.csv as well, because as I was mentioning, right? So we do the, we do the pre-processing in this train.csv and our model is fitted to that pre-processed data, right? So if you added few columns, you remove few columns, then the model is basically using that, you know, updated thing. And if you don't perform the same pre-processing steps on the test.csv, then it is going to have problems. Um, and then when you basically use that model to predict values on test.csv, you will finally have values in the clicked column for test.csv. Uh, and you can, you know, just copy paste. And I was asked to, you know, just copy paste all these uh, values in the clicked column from test.csv prediction uh, and upload the result, right? So yeah, if you see, it was like a mini project, very, very, you know, close to the open world because ultimately when you join a company and you get these kind of questions, all you know, and most of the times you don't even know the date table that it is given in this form. You have to even assemble this data together. So they did that for you, but they wanted to, you know, basically try to use that, these uh, information and test whether you are able to, you know, perform all the basic steps of a machine learning project that people usually do. And are you able to classify or basically get a good classification model, train a classification model and try to predict with a good accuracy on the test.csv file, right? Um, I think about if you spend about 60 to 80 minutes, uh, you can have a really good model with really good predictions in this. Um, so yeah, this was the entire online assessment questions from Expedia. I hope it was helpful for you to know the kind of questions you can expect in such questions, such interviews. Um, I shared about, again, uh, as I mentioned in the starting of the video, I shared about 22 questions from my Amazon data science interview as well. And you can find the link of the video in the description. You can watch it. It would be really helpful. Uh, and yeah, so let me know how did you like this video? You can try to solve these different questions and share the solutions in the comments, discuss with each other, etc. I also have written down few other experiences uh, uh, when I was interviewing for various roles, uh, which I will definitely share soon. I'm working on the videos and if you want to know more, you can even subscribe to the channel and until then I will see you guys in the next video. All the best.